Hello friends. One of the highlights of my career in family medicine were my patients from Japan. So almost 20 years ago now, Honda opened up a manufacturing plant in Lincoln, Alabama and brought with them employees from Japan and their families came with them as well. Not that Lincoln was that close to my practice, but many of the families chose to, to live in the area that was close to my practice. The employees had access to a physician on the Honda campus, but the families, the wives and the children, had to seek medical care in the community. Hello, I'm Dr. Renee Harmon. I'm the author of Surfing the Waves of Alzheimer's, and I've been speaking and talking and writing recently about communication in Alzheimer's disease. And I realized that I learned some of these speaking skills because of my Japanese patients. So these families from Japan, the wives and the children, would come to my practice with an interpreter. Um, Honda had hired two interpreters to accompany these families to medical, um, medical appointments as well as to schools. So it was very important to Honda that these families feel comfortable navigating this world, especially medical and at schools. So they weren't, the interpreters weren't available to go to the grocery store or to navigate restaurants or retail stores. Um, and the, the interpreters were uh, amazing women and I, I got to know them very well because they were in my office a lot and actually they became friends of mine. I admired their commitment to the, their families and they developed very close ties to several of these families. They were available to the families 24 seven. That was part of their job. The office visits for me were awkward at first as I tried to understand some differences in the medical culture. So for example, uh, the this Honda spouses that I called them were allowed to see me once a year for a preventive care visit. And Honda had ironed out a whole list of preventive care measures that they would cover. And it was a huge list of what they covered. It was, it was excessive in, in my opinion, but I did it. That, that's what they had worked out between their insurance company and Honda and the employees. Um, and there were other, a few other little quirks and uh, differences in the medical culture, but we learned to adjust to each other. The language barrier was probably the, the more difficult thing. Um, it was just, it just felt stiff and awkward until I developed a relationship with these two female interpreters and we learned how to talk to each other and, and interact with each other so that the patients could understand what was going on in the practice. So I had already, I already knew how to translate medical speak into common speak, but this was a, on a whole different level. I needed to speak in a very clear, precise way that was easy to translate. I learned how to speak in simple sentences, with simple words, slowly, and with pauses. Does that sound familiar? Yes, that's exactly what I've been talking about in the last couple of weeks in these videos and blog posts. So it's really hard for me to explain what that was like, but I think I found a way to do that. There is a new game available called um, Poetry for Neanderthals, and I think it sheds light on this way of speaking. Uh, so in the game, you are trying to get your teammates to guess a particular word, but you can only use one syllable words. So if your word is Tyrannosaurus Rex, you cannot say dinosaur, you cannot say lizard even. You would might say short arms, big teeth, roar, but uh, it's very difficult. Try it. I actually feel like I got good at it, or the interpreters told me that I was good at it. They told me that other medical providers weren't nearly as skilled as I was at, at this. And, and that felt good to me. That helped me know that these patients understood what was going on in my exam room. I also learned not to use sarcasm. Evidently, sarcasm is not a part of the Japanese language or culture. Um, 
And I didn't realize how much sarcasm I used until I had to eliminate it. Not the mean spirited, harsh type of sarcasm, but the, just that lighthearted joking kind such as, is it hot enough for you today? And I realized that my patients with dementia probably did not understand sarcasm either. One of the chapters in my book, toward the end of the book, is entitled, Imagine Waking Up in a Foreign Country and You Don't Understand the Language. It's meant as a thought exercise to help you understand what it must be like for patients who are living with dementia and, and, um, and to wake up every day not being able to understand your world. So these patients from Japan that I was interacting were also trying to navigate in a world without a working knowledge of English. So not only did I learn how to speak in a way that helped me communicate with Harvey later on, but I think I also got an inkling of what it must have been like for him to live in a world that was incomprehensible to him. Thank you. Be well and keep your balance.